Hello and welcome for the biology class. Today we're going to be talking about complex mating, complex assortative mating, excuse me, and we're going to be talking about Spanish people just because I say so. And uh, the study we're talking about is this one. It's the new study, new study that came out a month ago or so, uh, Mankind Quarterly. You can pause and read if you do want to. I'm just going to say that this uh, talk is going to be some nerdy bullshit that is not very based. However, if you are into nerdy bullshit like me, then stay along. Anyway, so homophily is the uh, like for other that are similar to yourself, the same love, so to say. And uh, if you look at humans as in a, a network of other humans, and you can see people who are romantic partners or former romantic partners, or I guess future romantic partners, and you can look at people who are friends or uh, schoolmates, people who are somehow connected to one another, uh, friends on Facebook, uh, uh, Twitter, uh, mutual followers, and so on, right? It's not random, right? You're not really following another or connected to another set of uh, humans on the planet at random. Uh, the ones you're connected to uh, tend to be more similar to yourself. And this is, of course, extra true for our long-term romantic partners. And um, when that happens, that is called assortative mating because they, they tend to be more similar. And you can, of course, have a negative assortment where you tend to be more dissimilar. And this does exist for some rare traits. And maybe it's important for immune system stuff because that results in uh, an extra um, diversity in the immune, uh, in the non-adaptive immune system, the, the passive one or whatever it's called. And that could be kind of useful. And supposedly that's supported by some uh, evolutionary psychology studies. But... I wouldn't really buy that. Uh, the evidence is just poor. Anyway, it may be true. Um, so it looks kind of like this if you do the uh, an illustration. Anyway, so humans, what do we have? Yes, we have a bunch of correlations from this meta-analysis, Lu et al. And they find that unsurprisingly, people who are, I think they're looking at either married couples or something similar, uh, the age, age correlations are very high. People who are married tend to be quite similar in age. Despite, you know, your favorite example of some big famous man who's married to, uh, you know, some woman who's 40 years younger, that's not normally the case. Mostly the correlations are like 0.8 or so. Uh, and you can see why, like most people kind of get married uh, sort of early in life, like after college or like when they're 25 or 30 or so. And the people you know at that age tend to just be other people from your in your age group, right? So it's really like the supply is mostly your own age group. Um, Educational attainment is uh, super, um, has super strong assortative mating, general social status, income stuff, a bit less. Um, 40, uh, correlations 40 to 0.6. Uh, that region, attitudes like religious or uh, religious opinions, and uh, they're also quite high, especially religious stuff. Uh, if you do like a kind of a composite measure of political opinion or religious stuff, they tend to be very strongly correlated, um, like 0 0.6, 0 0.7 even. Uh, if you do like specific values like uh, this t kind of risk taking, they are less correlated. Uh, it's mostly, I think, a measurement error problem. Like these more specific measures are more prone to just bad measurement. Um, general intelligence, uh, 0.4-ish. Uh, there is a meta-analysis of this somewhere. Uh, I did a simple one with just a few studies some years ago and never finished that. I found a mean correlation of 0.45 or so. Uh, that may not sound like too much, but that is actually the same as between siblings who are genetically related. Well, very, very genetically, half genetically identical. And uh, mental health stuff, again, uh, when you measure it nicely, get high assortment, maybe 0.5 kind of crazies, tend to date other crazies. Uh, they kind of get shunned by the other people. That's what the whole purpose of this um, uh, reducing, uh, what is it they call it? Uh, stigma is about like trying to get the normies to date the crazies and just not disassociate with uh, crazies. Uh, habitual behaviors, smoking stuff uh, makes sense. Smokers tend to date each other, especially because uh, smoking people tend to meet them. Uh, their partners like standing outside bars smoking this sort of thing. That's a typical social initiation ritual sort of. Uh, antisocial behavior, there are some correlations, but again, depends on measurement. If you do like some bad measurement early in life, I'm sure it's going to be very low, very high. If you do some like Big survey, maybe have a psychiatrist evaluate people. Um, height is, of course, something many people think about when you're looking at dating studies. But the, the correlation for height is actually not very high because it seems to follow more of a, a threshold model where um, it's important for the man to be taller, basically, men taller uh, norms. But aside from that, it's not that important. Like someone 
uh, an average uh, age, uh, average height man will tend to date kind of any random woman who is just uh, below that. So the correlation is weak, but still there. Um, if we look at animals, uh, there's tons of studies of different animals. We have this uh, Yang meta-analysis, Jiang, uh, they looked at different things. You can see uh, it's a, H is uh, high and uh, condition, I don't even know what that is, uh, size and some other stuff, right? So you can kind of split them and you can see that the structural characteristics is lower. I guess that's something like wingspan or so. Uh, someone did a specific meta-analysis in birds. It's this one, uh, Wang et al. And uh, they also, like humans, find that H uh, is the strongest one, but much less strongly correlated. Here we get, I don't know, 0.4 or so. Uh, some like physiology, uh, it's quite strong. Uh, some other stuff like heterozygosity is much weaker than like a genetic measure body size, some things that are less important. Anyway, so there, there's different studies and uh, I guess experimental data is uh, not giving a lot. Um, but it's it, the meta-analysis, it's, it's so wide here that it doesn't really tell you about anything. Unpublished data is weaker as expects. Um, uh, there's some, uh, there's uh, publication bias and apparently the one studies that people find more tend to be higher values. Anyway, so th there are some values, but they're less positive than you would expect. Um, Anyway, to move to this study, we have uh, the data that we're using is from 2000 or so. Uh, it's first published in this uh, Spanish level, uh, Spanish language study uh, by Robert, Roberto Colom. And he was nice enough to send the data to me, anonymized, and those are the data we have. And so what they have is that they have, um, there is data on 342 parent duos and childs or trios. Um, and so we have data on each parent and then uh, the child. And each child then is some university student. I think something like 90% or maybe 95% of them are university students. And the remaining is like maybe their friends. So it's like maybe snow, snowball sampling. Um, they were given the ISENC personality questionnaire. Uh, it's like has three major factors. And uh, the weird one here is the psychoticism. That's a mixture of low agreeableness and low consciousness. So you could say that if you split this out, you would get the big four and you're just missing the uh, openness scale. Uh, on the other hand, it does have the lie scale and lie scale is uh, kind of unusual, but it's essentially um, social disability. There's a bunch of questions in this questionnaire about um, self-presentation, like I would never steal and people who, who agree with some of these things are kind of just delusional about themselves or just lying for self-presentation purposes. They, they may be have, they have some, some kind of personality bias there. Uh, but that itself is a kind of personality trait, so we're looking at it too. It also has age, educational attainment, but only measured like in, in an ordinal, and it has intelligence. And the intelligence measure is just one test, but it's a cool one. It's uh, this one, the Domino test, and it's a, a Spanish language test, uh, apparently adapted from some like earlier stuff. I googled the test and somehow I found the PDF of it, so we actually have it now and we could use it. I'm sure it's copyrighted, but uh, you can still use it since who's going to sue you about some Spanish test. Um, anyway, so as we get to the things, uh, we can start with the very simple stuff. We take the same trait in both parents and we plot them. And if you do that, then you get um, you get these patterns. So the blue line here is the local regression. It's, uh, it's a smoothing line. Basically, you see for H, it's essentially linear, right? There's nothing much to see. And the other ones are mostly linear. Uh, the exceptions are at the tails, right? You could say, okay, that's not, maybe not entirely linear, but um, you can do a, a test to see if these uh, actually are significant, if that's if that above what you'd expect by chance. And that was done here. And you can see that this is the contribution you gain from um, the nonlinear model, which is quite small, except for maybe here, 3% extra if we do it for mom. Uh, it's probably a fluke, right? Um, if we do just the correlations and look at the linear uh, relations here, uh, we can do it across traits. So we'll see that if you look age mother, age uh, father, it's 0.81. So that's the same as this one. And uh, you can also look at, uh, for instance, here we have education assortment is quite strong. Uh, 6.5, remember the meta-analysis said it should be 40s to 60s. So 6.5 is pretty strong. Um, we have uh, for intelligence 48, pretty strong, especially considering we only have one test here. Uh, the weird thing here is that the intelligence of say the mother is only correlated um, 0.2 with her own ed educational level. And uh, for fathers, it's um, it's 0.3, which you would expect something more uh, here. Um, I actually used the uh, the latent correlations for these uh, because it's an ordinal, but still it didn't go up. So 
maybe it was just kind of filled out in, in properly in the measurement errors high, but then why is it so correlated here? I'm guessing they filled it out not quite right, but the parents filled it out together. So there's a, a shared error, right? There's a shared error here. Anyway, so you can see there's a, the lie scale, like this, uh, the tendency to do these positive self-presentation, self, uh, social disability responding, responding, it's positive. But most other things, it's, it's basically n n it's nothing, right? Psychoticism is only one point or a point 13 or so. Uh, interesting, what you get is that you can see there's some uh, some cross trait like relationship. So let's say the the tendency of the mother to do uh, social disciple responding is negatively strongly negatively related to the uh, the p factor of the mother or the, the psychoticism. So uh, I guess the psychoticism people are just like fuck it and the this is kind of measuring agreeableness in some sense. And so maybe we should look at the lies factor and agreeableness. So we can look at the lies mother. It's going to be agreeableness uh, which we don't have. So yeah, that's that's a part that's a part of the, uh, the psychoticism, right? So so that makes sense that the um, people who are too overly agreeableness they tend to uh, give kind of rosy picture of things. Um, there are some other uh, cross correlations, especially like we have age stuff here. It's negatively related to intelligence. So when age differences are uh, the age the age of the mother is negatively related to the uh, intelligence of the father. Uh, and the same for this one. I, I don't know exactly why that's the case. You can see there are some small patterns here and uh, anything that's above point, point 0.10 is, is beyond chance. So these uh, things are probably beyond chance, but are they really important when they're so small? And aside from these, uh, maybe not. Um, this we looked at already. And so what we can look at also is we can look at uh, trade-offs. And the trade-off is that when partners or more uh, who are more different on one trait are then uh, less different on another trait and so uh, or more different on another trait and so for instance if you have the typical hypothetical situation the typical discussed situation let's say we have wealthy men get to date uh, date younger women this would re re result in the correlations where uh, larger intelligence differences or income differences or education difference are also associated with high or larger age gaps and if we look at it here the age gap is this is the age gap and we can see that age gaps are actually negatively related to in, uh, education and intelligence. So it's actually the opposite of what you expect from this normal model. And in fact, most of these um, uh, sort uh, the uh, the trade-offs or the anti-trade-offs, they seem to be not much. The only thing that really shows up is again the lie scale, which shows up with these other patterns, and that may simply reflect correlations between some of these personality traits. And you can, you can wonder, like the most interesting here is, I guess, this one maybe. Why are people who uh, partners where there's a larger discrepancy in self uh, social disability, why do they also have uh, larger differences in intelligence? Maybe one of them uh, thinks they're much smarter than they are and they kind of trick the other parent into it, but actually they're not and they're just kind of like self preserving So they're kind of like fake it until you make it and I guess they made it. So, uh, but for other stuff, you don't see so much. Uh, this one is simply a function of the correlations between the traits. You can, it's easy to see people, uh, marriages, couples where the education levels are more different and obviously the intelligence levels are also uh, going to be on average more different unless they kind of like tend to date people who are extra intelligent when they date down in education. Uh, but that that is not supported by the study, right? It's, it's differences are larger in one than they're also larger in the other one on average, right? But it, there's not too much to see here, right? The largest is, is this minus 0.2, which is not totally impressive, right? Um, so currently, we don't really see too much like aside from these findings. Uh, another thing uh, the reviewer wanted to uh, discuss when I submitted this paper is they want to talk about uh, heteroskedasticity or heteroskedasticity. Yeah, what it means is that the variance is uh, uneven and the variance is the residual variance. So if you want to predict, uh, say, the height of one partner from the height of the other ones, maybe that's more accurate in one as, as a function of the trade value. And what you can see here is that if we're trying to predict the value from X, we can see that it's a lot easier down here. Over here, it's a big spread. This model is not very accurate over here because there's too much residual. Uh, down here, you can tell within a few a few value points what the value point is going to be if you know the X, but not over here, right? And, and the same here, we just have a, like a weird nonlinear one. And so this probably does not exist often in reality, but we can nevertheless test for it. If we do it for the traits, and these are the traits we have, uh, 
I guess except for the line scale and uh, but if you do the four ones here we see not too much like there is some for age uh, age uh, differences tend to be uh, larger as a function of the age of the father and all that really tells us is that older men tend to date uh, also downwards in age but not so much older women and this results in this uh, heteroscedasticity and for intelligence you get this yes there seems to be kind of a a decline here but then it goes up here again so it's probably like a weird fluke and there is not too much to see here uh, for these and that's that's also if you do if you try every combination of these from you can do it from every trait and you can do it from the mother to the father or the father to the mother and what you get is that the the, uh, the contribution of uh, the, the amount of this heteroscedasticity is, is, uh, is quite small and so there wasn't really anything much to see here aside from the uh, boring case of height that we already would know about um, so the conclusions of this study are these, a summary. Uh, we don't really see much personality assortative mating. Um, that's exactly what other studies also find. And we don't see that when we look for nonlinear stuff. And we don't see much trade-offs either. There's some trade-offs here and there. And potentially they're interesting. But uh, they're, not, like, they're not jumping out in your face and like screaming, look at me. Right? They're not that interesting. Uh, we don't see a lot of variance, uh, residual variance, uh, variation either. Uh, aside from age, but um, only, uh, almost all literature I found before doing this study, and the reason I did look for these weird complex stuff is that everything else was only talking about correlations and basically never, sh never showing any scatter plots. So I'm like, are we missing some fancy things about assortative mating uh, because we're only looking at correlations, like a linear relationship? And it seems that the answer is no, we're not missing a lot of stuff. Things seem, seem to be mostly linear, and there doesn't seem to be like weird trade-offs, um, at least not much. Um, what we don't have is uh, studies looking at assortative mating that use other rated or objective personality measures. And uh, there are some for homophily, like they use the, uh, say the ad health or something, some like student data set where you measure more than one person in, in, a, in a classroom. And you can see that you can also ask the kids how, who they tend to be friends with. And you can see that the smarter kids tend to uh, be friends with each other and so on. Um, so that's a kind of objective measure of personality, but for extroversion or something you'd expect other extroverts to be more friends since they tend to go to parties together and the introverts I guess just have fewer friends since they don't go to parties uh, but that is there's not just much research on this aside from using these self-report data and these uh, as every comparison of self-report to other report and so on shows is that self-report alone is just bad right and is it may be that personality measures are actually should be much more high quality if we could just measure it better um, so there's a review post of this that I've done before and that pretty much brings us to the end of this video is that uh, I hope that um, We're going to be having some more data sets that have objective uh, measures Maybe we can even impute it from some other stuff or uh, something like that. Uh, but uh, aside from that, goodbye